Good morning and thank you all for joining us for today's ECHO presentation. My name is Kevon and I'm the Max Tele ECHO coordinator. I would ask that all of our participants take a moment to introduce themselves in the chat. And I will ask our Max consultant, Dr. Bethany DePaula, to introduce herself to the group. Hi, I'm Bethany DePaula. I am a professor with the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy. My specialty is psychiatric pharmacy and particularly patients with substance use disorders, and I'm a consultant with Max. Thank you, Dr. DePaula. At this time, we're going to begin our case presentation. I'm going to pass the mic over to our case presenter, and I will share the case presentation form. So at this time, we're going to begin with our case presentation form. I'm going to mute myself, and whenever you're ready, you may take over. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Avi Ramprashad. I am one of the addiction psychiatrists at the University of Maryland. Uh, so I'll be presenting the case for this morning. And so uh, I'll just start with the question. And so the question on this case was about uh, Vivitrol injection and a potential reaction to that uh, medication from one of the patients I've seen here at our OTP. And so uh, he is a 42-year-old Caucasian male with a medical history, at least, of chronic pain issues in both of his knees and a past psychiatric history of PTSD, uh, opioid use disorder, sedative hypnotic use disorder, uh, primarily benzodiazepines. And so uh, he was reporting uh, symptoms of disorientation, confusion, uh, hot, cold flashes, dizziness, and poor appetite after receiving his last Vivitrol shot. And uh, all of these symptoms were corroborated by his wife, uh, who joined him for the visit. Um, and so he was saying that he had these symptoms pretty much after he had his last couple injections. And that the symptoms, uh, the ones I just described, usually last for about two or three days. Uh, so he had his most recent shot on July 20th. And then two days after that, he had an ER visit for syncope. Uh, so they did a cardiac rule out and uh, found those to be negative. And so, um, but his urine toxicology at the time of the ER visit was positive for benzos, methadone, and opiates. And so despite his getting Vivitrol injections for the past few months, he has had intermittent opioid and benzo use, um, but he denied any opioid use leading into the week uh, when he was about to receive his Vivitrol injection. And so my question for the group here is uh, whether we all think that this may be a reaction to the Vivitrol injection in itself, or was this a case of precipitated withdrawal, uh, given that he was still using opioids uh, in between him getting Vivitrol? And I guess another potential treatment-related question would be, will you transition this patient to uh, Suboxone? What would be the timeline for, for such a transition? And so uh, just some demographic info, like I said, he's a 42-year-old male. He lives in Baltimore City. Uh, he does live with his wife and two kids. Uh, they're four and 14 years old. Uh, so he's very motivated to take care of his family. He has spent a lot of time incarcerated. And so uh, staying out of prison and being able to be there for his kids was a big motivating factor for him seeking treatment. Uh, he does have a history of early childhood exposure to traumas of all kinds, but primarily physical violence. He has himself committed physical violence, and a lot of his uh, legal-related involvement had to do with his uh, physical violence and assault charges. Uh, a little more of his social history, and he grew up here in Baltimore. He finished eighth grade, but he did speak about a long history of behavioral issues in school. He's been suspended a ton of times. Uh, he generally did poorly as far as grades, and he only completed eighth grade uh, before the onset of legal issues, again, related to fighting and assault and uh, substance use. And so uh, those legal issues started in his early teens. Uh, he had periods of incarceration up to years for those charges. Um, and so he, uh, as far as getting onto the Vivitrol, he 
was actually incarcerated for about three months and he reported that he was on methadone at that time, but they detoxed him cold turkey when he uh, was arrested. And so he didn't receive any methadone maintenance or treatment for opioid use disorder at that time. And so after the three month uh, stint in prison, that's when he got started on the Vivitrol in around February or March of 2020. And uh, this event with the ER visit was a few months after that. So he had gotten the Vivitrol shot about three or four times. And he said each of those times had some degree of uh, these symptoms with the confusion, disorientation, uh, appetite issues, dizziness. Um, and a little further about his substance use history. Thank you for scrolling down. Um, he had been using benzodiazepines at least through 2019. He reports that he uses them uh, every day that he can find them. Uh, most often it was daily. And so he was using Valium about five to 10 milligrams, whatever he could find. Uh, he would take one of those uh, about twice a day. And so that was a daily uh, thing at the time of this event as well. Uh, he also reports using Adderall illicitly, uh, basically as much as he can find or, or can afford at the time. Uh, and he says that he is treating his uh, ADHD himself. And he denied any drinking uh, alcohol. And so uh, we mentioned his diagnoses, opioid use disorder, benzo use disorder, uh, PTSD, along with depression and anxiety. And there were concerns, again, about his ADHD and potential antisocial personality disorder, given his uh, behaviors. And so he was uh, being seen here for uh, treatment for his opioid use and benzo use. He was also getting ongoing uh, psychotherapy and was attending groups uh, at some point before COVID disrupted that. Um, Again, his, his urine toxicology from that ER visit uh, a few days after his shot was positive for methadone, opiates, and benzos. So there's a possibility that uh, he was also taking methadone at some point uh, while getting the Vivitrol. Um, as far as the PDMP or prescription drug monitoring program, uh, it showed that actually a few days after this ER visit that he was started on Suboxone. It was about a week later, I believe, by his primary care or another provider. Uh, but someone who he had not had a long-standing relationship with. And uh, it also found that there was uh, so, uh, some short benzo scripts uh, for a Valium taper sometime in 2019, indicating that maybe he was treated for uh, benzo withdrawal. Scroll down, please. All right. Um, so again, yeah, his goals, uh, like I mentioned before, were to stay out of prison and to be there for his young kids. I uh, spoke a lot about his own parents not being there for him, and so that was a big uh, motivating factor for him joining treatment and coming here to be seen. Um, he wanted to get back to work once COVID had uh, resolved, which we are still dealing with, uh, so that has not happened as yet. And also just wanting to remain abstinent and to get better control of his anger and moods, which he felt drove a lot of his substance use. And so, um, you know, he did end up getting started on Suboxone by this outside provider after the ER visit. And so we were still kind of unclear about what that syncope or what that presentation was about. Was it potentially related to the Vivitrol itself or was it a uh, precipitated withdrawal situation? Maybe it had to do with his benzo use as well. Uh, in any case, he felt that after the few times of getting it and having those symptoms that he no longer wanted to stay on the Vivitrol because of that and was hoping to be able to continue with Suboxone. And as far as other medications that he takes, he was also taking Seroquel uh, at night for sleep and Duloxetine uh, for his mood and also for his chronic pain issues. That is the case. Well, thank you very much, Avi. Really appreciate that. At this time, I am going to open the floor for clarifying questions from our learning community. So please feel free to come off of mute and uh, state your question and Avi will answer to the best of his ability if it's information that he does have. And clarif clarifying questions can be anything that was on the form that you need additional information about or any information that you'd like to know that did not quite make it onto the form. So at this time, please unmute uh, and ask your question. Hi, good morning. My name is Christina Ferrante and I work at Max. My question is, what degree of sedative hypnotic use disorder does the patient have and what types of withdrawal has he had from in I'm sorry, in the past from benzos? 
Yeah, uh, that's a great question. And so as far as he reported to us, um, he was taking Valium, at least in the period leading up to this, uh, he was taking them every day, about five to 10 milligrams twice a day. Uh, it was based on basically how much he could find or how much he could afford. Um, and so uh, as far as withdrawal from benzos, uh, he did report that he's had shakes and tremors in the past. Um, I don't believe that he's had withdrawal seizures, um, but he you know, did have that uh, Valium taper prescribed to him. And so maybe he had sought treatment for benzo withdrawal in the past, or maybe he was seen for something else and was treated for that incidentally. And so he has had some mild withdrawal, I guess I'll say, but I'm not sure about something further than that. Thank you. Were there any additional questions? Yeah, I'm Thomas Cole, and I'm from the University of Maryland. Um, uh, were there other side effects in the past with Vivitrol? Um, aside from these, not that he mentioned, he did uh, complain a lot about the soreness after the injection, and he felt like there was a lump stuck in there for a few days afterwards, and so uh, he, he complained about the pain after the shot for a bit, but this, uh, these symptoms that lasted for the couple days uh, seemed to be his main complaint with that. And before I turn over to questions from our consultants, were there any additional questions? Hi, yes. Um, I'm Anna. I'm with a rural practice out in um, Washington County. I have a question. Um, what type of psychotherapy or non-medication treatments have been tried or used? Um, yeah, that's a great question, too. And so um, before this uh, all happened, uh, he was... Uh, he did say that he was seeing an outside provider for psychotherapy. I'm not sure of what modality. Um, and then before COVID kind of started, he was also attending groups in an IOP program at some point before another uh, incarceration. So he had been uh, in groups to some extent and also seeing somebody for individual therapy. But again, his psychiatric treatment has been pretty choppy due to his uh, legal involvement. Thank you. And at this time, I'm going to ask our consultants if there were had any clarifying questions before we move into recommendations. I do have a couple of questions for you. Um, first, I'm wondering from an efficacy standpoint, obviously, he was still using opioids in conjunction with the naltrexone. Um, did he say that the naltrexone was beneficial as far as relieving craving? W were there any good outcomes from the naltrexone? Um, so I believe, like, it seemed that when he started the Vivitrol was a very sudden thing after his incarceration, and so they kind of ripped him off the methadone very quickly and got him onto that. So I'm not sure uh, how much, I guess, buy-in he had around that. He did feel like it helped with cravings, at least initially, maybe for the first couple months. And I think his enthusiasm kind of waned uh, with the side effects he was having. And he's on buprenorphine now. That was started by another provider, is that right? Yes, around one week after this uh, visit. What dose is he currently on, and have you had an opportunity to talk to him about benefits with the buprenorphine so far? Uh, I think at the time he was on eight milligrams twice a day, um, and he did feel like that was helping the cravings a little bit more. He felt like he wasn't seeking opioids as much as he was uh, with the Vivitrol. Um, yeah. And then the other question I had was with um his psychiatric symptoms it, it seems like from the case description that anger and mood is somewhat of a trigger for him and i'm wondering um where you think he is as far as benefiting from his current psychotropics the seroquel 100 and and thoughts around what else they've tried um, for managing his medications yeah, um, and so the anger piece was definitely a big component for him. Uh, he also reported using opioids and benzos really to calm down anger that he would have for a variety of situations. And so um, I believe that the Seroquel was actually a little bit on the lower side of the dosing, and I think the Cymbalta, the Duloxetine, also was uh, not fully maximized. And so we were hoping to kind of increase those or help with insomnia, help see if we could like, deal with the mood a little bit better, get under better control so we won't have the same drivers to, to seek other drugs. Okay. Thank uh, you. There was also consideration for using Adderall uh, to treat his seemingly ADHD. evident ADHD. <laughs> well, 
so he clearly has it sounds like childhood history and pattern consistent so yeah thank you so at this time i'm going to open the floor for our learning community to provide our presenter with any recommendations uh based off of the case form as well as any clarifying questions that were asked and answered so please feel free to come off mute and offer any recommendations or comments that you may have I would say that uh, if this was a reaction to Vivitrol, to consider switching to Suboxone or Methadone if naltrexone was intolerable. Thank you, Tom. And any additional recommendations? Um, addressing benzo use and how this might impact reported symptoms after a Vivitrol injection, consider benzo detox, more frequent visits, um, more frequent urine drug screens um, for and suggest possible IOP and residential treatments. Thank you. And before I move on to uh, recommendations from our consultant, Dr. DePaula, were there any additional? All right, so at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. DePaula to offer any of her recommendations for Avi. This is a really interesting case. Thank you so much for presenting. I had a couple of thoughts. I agree that um, the Vivitrol certainly could be causing the side effects. I, I do think there's a possibility that there's some precipitated withdrawal or combination of, but from a patient-centered perspective, it sounds like Vivitrol's probably not the best medication for this particular patient with somewhat limited efficacy and, and potential risk for a clear temporal pattern that seems mm -hmm. like side effects. Um, I also was thinking, and we kind of already talked about, um, that we probably want to optimize the psychotropics, particularly Seroquel, or finding another mood stabilizer um, to manage PTSD symptoms and manage possibly some of the, the mood instability. Um, I also definitely think that if the patient doesn't have naloxone, that we should make sure that we offer naloxone um, because obviously he's continuing to use. And then assuming that we're going to continue with the buprenorphine, just considering if this is the best dose for him and whether he needs any further optimization would be my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. DePaula. Really appreciate it. And were there any other thoughts or comments before we wrap up the case discussion? All right. And any other final thoughts, Dr. DePaula, before we wrap up? No, again, I think this is a really interesting case, and I'll just sort of summarize the suggestions. It seemed like there was a consensus that this that the symptoms described could be side effects associated with Vivitrol. Patients already been switched to buprenorphine, and so it seems like it makes sense to con continue with that and continue to optimize the dose as necessary, monitoring for efficacy. We talked a little bit about stabilizing psychiatric symptoms that might be contributing, and um, also to consider whether there needs to be any sort of um, benzodiazepine taper or dress around the, the benzodiazepine use of pharmacologic address of the benzodiazepine use. And, and also the stimulant use and whether the patient needs to be assessed for ADHD and um, prescribed pharmacotherapy to treat ADHD, whether that be a stimulant or a non-stimulant alternative. Mm -hmm. Thank you everyone for all of your input, your questions, comments, as well as recommendations. I will uh, receive the recommendations from Dr. DePaula and I'll be able to issue a letter uh, to Avi with all of the recommendations that have been discussed today. Thank you all and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you.